The official title for this rant is Things I Will Miss About the Stars and Stripes. Other titles I considered were What I Will Miss About the United States and America's War Against the New World Order. That may sound somewhat dramatic and overhyped, but I'm completely serious. You may smirk and make a funny face, but consider this. Right now, Europe is opening its flight borders to most of the world, the notable exception being America. If you believe the mainstream narrative, the virus has hit no country harder than us. We handled the entire thing irresponsibly. And apparently there are bodies piling in the streets. Again, that of course isn't true, but most of the world believes it. This is not a test. This is not a drill. The NWO, let's just call them the order, after decades of planning, is finally making its last moves against the United States. I suppose one of the first questions you might have is, why is the order picking on America? The short answer is that America is still a bunch of rebels. We are a loose cannon in the world. We do what we want and don't have much patience for anyone who goes against us or says anything about us or even looks at us funny. Go ahead, make our day. Put up or shut up and take this job and shove it. We started or finished eight different major wars, sure, but we also engaged in petty vendettas, like when we changed French fries to freedom fries for a while because France wouldn't sign off on one of our agreements. Past empires have tried to take over the world, but as any military leader knows, the problem lies in a standing army. If you are strong enough, you can take an area by force, but the only way to hold it is by deploying troops to stay there. Over time, they have all faced rebellion and had to withdraw. The short version is that even Rome fell. If they can lose, then you have to rethink your tactics. The Order then decided that the only way to create a one-world government wasn't by military might alone, but a creation of a conformist society where everyone was linked together by a common denominator. Seems like a solid plan. All it takes is money and time. Except that there was this country called America. You couldn't get them to go along with anything. Remember the metric system? The whole world decided that this was a great idea all the way back in the 1970s. Not America, though. No, we like our inch, yard, mile, and pound just fine, thank you. Centimeters and kilos are for those Europeans with their high fashion and expensive cheeses. We were too busy saying things like, might makes right. From that one motto, we built the coolest military the world has ever known. Think you can invade the US? How? We have two massive oceans on either side, Canada to the north and Mexico to the south. Both filled with so many operatives, we could respond with nukes before your first soldier got out of bed in the morning. We have the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, even a Coast Guard for good measure. We have the FBI, CIA, NSA, Naval Intelligence, and other scarier alphabet groups we don't even make public. You really want to take on a country that has a place called Area 51? Part of me wants to know what goes on there. But another part of me doesn't, and for good reason. It's full of secrets. Even after we inflated our military budget to obscene levels, it still wasn't enough. We had Hollywood build special guns for action heroes, then sold those guns as souvenirs to the general public. They didn't have to arm us. We paid for it with our own money. There are literally more guns in the U.S. than there are actual citizens. How's that for genius? We have layers upon layers of defense, truly 
the last great castle nation of the world. The Order knew this, of course, knew that there was no way to stop the U.S. by conventional means, so they devised a plan. Create economic chaos, polarize the nation by party, by race, by gender, by whatever means necessary, and watch us divide ourselves into camps. Then you release a perceived threat, like a virus, to keep everyone confused and afraid until it's time to unveil their shining beacon of hope. But that secret is for another rant and another time. This rant is about some of the great things that made America the coolest villain ever. We became so popular that some of you were flattered when our gaze turned your way. Like the movie saying goes, once Regina George punched me in the face. It was awesome. We said that greed is good and created an army of people who thought the American dream should be achieved by any means. There were too many Gordon Geckos to count and they built financial towers that were breathtaking. We told kids that winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. And molded athletes who would literally lie, cheat, steal, and kill to become champions. Then we would act surprised when they got caught. Our gift to culture was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. We lifted artists onto pedestals, then pulled them down when the fame was too much, or we got bored, whichever came first. Our national anthem is played at every professional game, and the bread and circuses of America runs 24-7. The baseball season overlaps the start of football season, which overlaps basketball. Every day of the year, our song was played to countless thousands. There are many people out there who still don't know the words. It goes something like this. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Over the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave land of the free and the home of the brave. If you heard music, well, I read that, then there might still be some hope for you. The U.S. flag is everywhere. We see it from the time we enter school until the grave. And yet, most Americans can only tell you what the stars are, not the stripes. The 50 stars, of course, represent the 50 states. But what about the red and white stripes? Hint, there are 13 of them. If you said the original 13 colonies, then you would be correct. 
The founding states were Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Delaware, New York, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, and Georgia. For those who are against colonialism, you need look no further than our flag, because that's what it represents. Colonialism is why we're all here, because independent groups in search of fortune and power decided to colonize land. If you were on that land, then you were in our way. If you feel that this was wrong, please, by all means, write your local government official and petition to give it back to the original owners. Although it's going to be difficult. Take Texas, for example. Mexico laid claim to it, but Native Americans also lived there without any formal government. How do you resolve that exactly? America literally became the greatest show on earth, and other nations looked in awe and wonder. How did we ever make it this far without burning the whole thing down? We used to sell cocaine and opium across the counter at drugstores. We used to sell machine guns to the general public. We used to have the Wild West, where you could shoot first and ask questions later. Oh, we had brief moments of clarity. We stopped making and serving alcohol in the United States for 13 entire years. It created a new era of criminals whose entire job was to get booze to the people. We made electric guitars, blue jeans, and people went to the drive-ins in huge cars with no seat belts. We have no patience, so food became fast food, and people yelled at their microwaves to hurry up. Three minutes is far too long. Restaurants served portions so big, you always had leftovers, but we always forgot the to-go box because we were so full. We lined up 20 deep for $6 drinks that used to be 50 cent a cup coffee. We are Ronald McDonald and theme parks and rock stars throwing televisions out of hotel windows. We built a time machine out of a DeLorean, but we also thought up Sharknado. We are gay rights and we are black sites. Even when we made mistakes, we seem to be able to turn a profit from it. Can't make a battlefield skin suture work? Sell it to the general public as super glue. Can't get a blood pressure medicine to be effective? Slap on a new label and call it Viagra. You're welcome. We are a paradox and just make the rules up as we go. We create horror movies with monsters that will not die and yet we tell kids there is nothing under the bed. We are baseball and apple pie, but we are also cage matches and hot pockets. We lift our chins too high while saying we had men walk on the moon, but suspiciously never go back to rub it in. Our producers went to other countries with bags of money and bought the best that media has to offer. We bought actors from the UK, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and we purchased voices from anywhere that accepted the dollar, which everyone was happy to do. But all that changed in January of 2020. The order apparently has had enough of our bad boy mentality. Was our media culture disrupting the calm of the world? Did we take it too far like we always seem to do? Difficult to say. It's true that reality television hasn't done us any favors and our movie production has been in decline since 1999. And only in America could you get away with a show literally called Lucifer, where the devil teams up with Los Angeles police to fight crime because he's not a bad guy, he's just misunderstood. Is this the beginning of the end of the United States of America. Albert Einstein was once asked what weapons will be used in World War III. He answered with this, I know not what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. America is currently going through a tunnel 
What emerges on the other side of that tunnel is unknown, but I can tell you, it will be a much different country than what you knew back in 2019. If future historians come across this and decide to reflect on what the USA was, know that we tried to be everything that was good and bad in humanity. We were big tobacco and big pharma, but we were also the Justice League and the Avengers. And yes, sometimes we were Thanos. When we were young, we played with Barbie and G.I. Joe. When we got older, we played with Colt and Smith and Wesson. We were Harley Davidsons and Jack Daniels. We got into our pickup trucks and went to the car show or the air show. And while we were at it, picked up two tickets to the gun show. We were muscle cars and Coca-Cola Slurpees. We were billionaires living in ivory towers and homeless living in a cardboard shack on the streets below. And yes, sometimes we had to choose between church and the playoffs because for God's sakes, it was the frickin' playoffs. We may not have been right and sometimes we had no idea what we were doing, but I double dog dare ya to find me a country more fun and interesting than the USA. We were the party and you all wanted to be invited. We mixed in just about every culture and idea you could imagine. Ingredients in not just a melting pot, but a vast cauldron. And often it was a wonder to behold. If this is our fate, then I suppose it is long overdue and much deserved. To the new world order who currently holds our future and will eventually pass judgment, I have only one thing left to say. We were the United States of America and you will remember us. <laughs>